Guys, welcome to Better Bachelor. My name is Joker, and today we're going to be talking a little bit about fall's hottest trend, ditch your man, um, some stupid article written on Jezebel. And and the reason why I like talking about these things is that there's this big push that men are worthless. They're not necessary. They're a luxury item to, to use and, and enjoy for as long as you like, and then you can dispose of them and get rid of them. You know, when I was when I was dating and and many of you guys that I've read your stories on my channel, a lot of you guys said when you know, when you were dating, uh, you felt like you did the right things, you you worked hard, you you were a good provider, and for some reason she left you. And and a lot of times a lot of guys are like, I, I don't know what I I did wrong. Like I, I I'm unsure is there something that I missed or I could have done more? And when you start breaking down all the numbers, uh, what it really seems to be is that that men just go unappreciated and that that we're kind of put on the back burner until a woman wants something or until she thinks she's um, she's entitled to something. And then she wants her man to step up. And then once he's done stepping up and she feels like, well, I'm done with him, I can dispose of him now. Well, she gets rid of him and, and goes back to back to single life uh, looking to, I don't know, find somebody else. When you start looking at the statistics, though, a lot of this stuff doesn't really add up. You know, a woman wants uh, a man to do equal housework around the house. You might say, well, that's fair. But but women are only, uh, I've done the statistics on other videos, women want a man that also makes 50% 50, 50 more money than she does because she wants to only date up. We call that hypergamy. So how can a, a man make 50% more money but work the same amount of hours that she does. Many cases he can't. So you, you get this catch 22 where he's got to work a lot of hours. He's got to work very hard. And and then when he, he comes home, he's expected to pull half his weight in the household. Well, if he has to bring more from working and he has to do the same amount of, of household chores or women complain about it, what's he getting out of the deal? Is he coming home to a, a hot cooked dinner? No. Is he coming home to a clean home? Well, no, because half of that responsibility is him. Is he coming home to the laundry being done? No. So if we're going to go 50-50 in the house, why is it okay that, that women, you know, just, why do they not just purchase or why do they not just uh, uh, do more of the, the household chores? See, it doesn't work like that. It's an all or nothing deal. And, and women are expecting too much from men. And at the end of the day, men are realizing, hey, the only thing I'm getting out of this is some bedroom fun and somebody that expects a hell of a lot of work from me. And it ends up being more work than anything else because a guy used to be able to focus just on his job and the woman would focus on the household. Well, now she's got to focus on her job and the household. So does he. So it's also harder for him to make more money. Let me get into the, the main article here that, that I want to talk about today. Um, I, I found this thumbnail from a couple of different things. Obviously, this guy's a little bit older than the gal that we have in the photo here, but that that's actually done for a purpose, and we're going to talk about this. The first article from Jezebel, which is kind of a trashy site, uh, but this is also, they also reference some things in the New York Times in one of these articles. So this isn't just a, you know, a, a back website, you know, nothing burger. They say, uh, here's some good reasons to divorce your husband this fall. Fall's hottest trend is getting rid of the man who thought he was really helping out around the house. So apparently bringing home 50% more income, uh, I, I guess you're really not helping out around the house, you know, with the extra bills, with the fancier car, with making sure your kids have everything that they need for, for school and making sure that, you know, she lives a comfortable life. That's not enough anymore. You guys also have to do laundry and everything else. And the reason why these articles are so damn important is because so many men at the end of the day say, I don't understand what I did wrong. And the truth is you didn't do anything wrong. It's that expectations are too high for what women expect of their men. And then they divorce them or then they leave them. They go out and find somebody else and they keep doing it until it's too late for them. And we're going to talk more about that tonight uh, as well. So they say last week, 
the New York uh, the New York Times Styles section reported on what might truly be the most foreseeable uh, pandemic trend: post lockdown divorces, which are allegedly creating an avalanche of work for attorneys in cities like Los Angeles and New York. As someone who was once quoted in one of the thousands of puff pieces about how difficult it is to spend every waking moment of your life with a person you're supposedly in love with, this makes complete sense to me. As one of the attorneys told The Times, since April, our phones have been ringing off the hook nonstop. And most of those calling are people who want to come in and start divorce proceedings. You could probably say most of these are women wanting to come in and start divorce proceedings because women file for divorce 60 to 80% of the time. There's publications out there. I've cited it in other videos. So we know most of the time women are like, you know what? Uh, the house is a mess. Yeah, he's working from home now. I'm working from home now. He's not doing enough around the household. Yes, he's bringing in 50% more money in many cases. Again, this is what st statistically women want, uh, but he's not doing enough around the household. So when a, again, when a guy has to make more money and do 50% of the household chores, what's in it for him? There's just not enough there anymore. They say because, of the, because this story appeared in the styles section, its central focus is on the problems people who read the styles might have, having a well-compensated partner who lost a job, making it less attractive to stick around for the money. Affairs uncovered when one partner could no longer book a fancy uh, hotel uptown, disagreements about whether the nanny should still be allowed in the house or whether the children need to wear masks when they socialized with other kids. Notice the first one they put on this list, when a, a, when a spouse, a well-compensated partner who lost a job, making it less attractive to stick around for the money. Who's that? That's women. Women do that. Why? Because if a, a, guy, a guy when he's single has no help, no help from the government, really. He doesn't, ha he doesn't get child support. He, a lot of times positions are now being given out to women at a greater rate. He's now competing with women. Um, so if a man can't provide for himself, that's it, game over. If a woman can't provide for herself, she can still level up by marrying a guy. No woman has ever leveled a guy up by saying, well, you know, I know he works at Taco Bell, but I'm an executive, but he's really hot. So I'll marry this, ex uh, this really hot guy and I'll keep providing as an executive. No woman does that. That's something only men do. Men, on the other hand, would be like, hey, you know what? She's funny. She's smart. She's interesting, but she only works at Taco Bell, but she's cool to hang around with and have fun with. I'll date her because I have plenty of resources and I'm, I'm really socially and well, morally, a lot of guys say, I'm, I, I can't ever be dependent on her, on her. It doesn't work that way. And women do not want, no woman lifts a man out of the gutter to give her a better life. So when they say, oh, well, spouse lost the money, I don't wanna stick around. We know they're talking about women. Then they're talking about, well, uh, partners cheating on each other. There's been many surveys uh, and as well as a couple of studies. And again, I've referenced this in other videos, but I don't want to continually pull them up the same stories over and over and over again, where women are cheating almost at the same level of men, 55% men, 45% women. So again, this is a 50-50 thing. So you can see here that instantly they're talking about, hey, guy's not doing housework, lost his job. I don't want him anymore. They continue on, but assuming some of these people get divorced are women who date men, I have a couple of alternative theories for why the divorce rate is spiking. For instance, during the lockdown, when both members of a couple were working from home full-time during a lockdown, 67% of women reported they were fully or mostly responsible for housework. When a child was homeschooled during the pandemic that shuttered schools for months, 3% of women said their spouse was doing more schooling than they were. Between May and June of last year, one in four women who left the workforce reported doing so because they needed to care for a child. One in eight men reported the same circumstances. And while most fathers say they're actively and equally involved in raising their child, a full three quarters of women say they do more child work than their spouse. The cumulative effect of all this labor foisted on American women uh, labor that appears to go unnoticed by men who are living with them and co-parenting their children has been called grotesque and it, it and it has helped 
create a scenario in which women's participation in the workforce is now as low as it was in the 1980s. Now imagine spending a year and a half working full-time, caring for your child largely unaided, and doing the majority of chores while your husband occasionally congratulated himself on putting the dishes away. Wouldn't you want a GD divorce too? So if, if this is truly the way that they look at a guy where they say, okay, the men are not doing as much work around the household. Okay, fair enough. Should he do equal amounts around the household? If the answer is yes, then you as women should be bringing home equal amounts in pay. And if they do, here's the kick. If they do, women who make more than their man who get promoted above him or he loses a job and starts making less, 90% of those women leave the men, period. They, this is another th thing that I've done in other videos where CEOs and women that out, got out prom promoted fr over their man's income and position feel like he's holding them back. So they look for a new man. So more than likely, the most of the men that they're talking about are still bringing home more money, possibly are working more difficult jobs, possibly are working more hours. And but again, it's got to be equal in the house. And see, when you see stories like this and you hear so many men saying, you know something, I, yeah, I don't do as much around the house, but I'm also working overtime or I'm working night shifts or I'm working weekend shifts or um, I bring home a lot more money. The wife's saying, well, that's not good enough. You also need to do half around the house. My point is this, then what are the women bringing to the table? Because just being there isn't enough anymore just doing your half of the household stuff isn't enough because a guy can't go to the woman and say, hey, you know something you got to raise? Let's take some of that extra money and buy me a new car. That doesn't happen. Or if it does, it's very rare. It's usually the guy, the guy's portion of the money that gets divvied up for the extra things. We know this. We know this. It's in story after story after story. Um, the, the very first post, and this is the discussion and, and probably the most popular post on here. And this just kind of sums it all up for you. Uh, this is by R.R. Pete. And I don't know if that's a, a woman or a man or whatever. They say, it's, I'm sure it's because I'm a barren millennial spinster with no prospects, but I'm also sure it's because I watched my mother and aunts struggle in their relationships with men that I am convinced that marriages with men are a true dice roll in life. Sure, all relationships are a dice roll. Okay, so she says she's a barren millennial spinster. I, I, okay, how you're barren, I'm not sure. If you're a millennial and you're a spinster, so I guess you wanna be alone, I don't know. They say married men get all of the benefits of a live-in housekeeper who raises their children while they get to act like permanent children. See, this is how women view you men. You know, oh, he's got hobbies I'm not interested in, or he's he's got a room that's uh, kind of just his little man cave where he goes and plays video games or does his hobby. He's a child. Children have hobbies. Children play games. Okay, then I guess what? Me, there's many men that are like, okay, I'm a 30 or a 40 or a 50 or a 60 or a seven-year-old man child. I still like my hobbies and my games. Women don't appar apparently, uh, at least the way she talks. And, and these women see themselves as a permanent housekeeper. Okay, so if I hired a housekeeper slash cook, would I get a cook? Probably. Well, yeah, if I hired one, would I get a housekeeper? Yeah. Would they come in? Now, I've hired a housekeeper before. Takes them about an hour to do a top to bottom clean of my place. Cost me, I think at the time it was about 60 or 70 bucks. I keep a pretty clean place. I haven't done this in years, but I did hire one to come in when I was working a lot and I was remote. They just came in, they kept my place clean for me. I'd come home, clean apartment. They did it like once or twice a month. Yeah, it cost me, I don't know, 60 or 75 bucks or 50 bucks, whatever it was, but it was really clean. Now, when I was in the Philippines, a lot of guys over there said, yeah, I hire a woman to come in and cook for me. And of course, it's a lot cheaper over there than it is here in the United States. And when I was over in the Philippines, you know what a Filipino woman did? She cooked. I just went on dates with her. And she's like, come on over. I'll cook for you. She cooked. Now, if I left a little bit of laundry behind, like a sweatshirt or something, and I went back and I forgot it, I came back and it was washed, cleaned, and folded. I didn't ask her to do it. She just did it. And when I, I, when I went, uh, uh, one more reference here. 
when we went and she did cook me dinner one time, she was doing the dishes afterwards. And I said to her, would you like a hand? And she laughed at me and said, no, why? And I said, well, I mean, I ate, you cooked. Would you like some help You know, doing the dishes? I can at least chip in a little bit. She's like, why would you do that? I'm like, oh, I, don't, I don't know. I was just kidding. She's like, kind of rolled her eyes at me. It's because they're still very traditional. But when we go out and we do a special event, I bought dinner. It, it, I, it, in some cases, I paid for it. So this imbalance of where women want to work and, and women want to do half the work, but they still want their man to do the half, but he's got to bring in more money. This just doesn't work out. So they say here, uh, to, to wrap it up, this uh, one comment, I don't know how women bear a life where they unironically feel like they're raising an additional child in their cis male adult partner. There are no thank yous and no awareness, and there is no partnership. The men have the audacity to wonder why their partner is too tired, too stressed, too emotionally distant to have regular intercourse with them. Ladies, if you feel like a single parent in your relationship, then you might as well be single. Hey, I don't know, I don't know about you, but I know plenty of guys that are, are really quick with the thank you and that's special and that was really sweet and I appreciate that. Maybe this person didn't. But I know a lot of guys, a lot of you guys out there that say, hey, I went out of my way. I paid for her college. I made sure she had a nice car. I took care of the kids. I tried to do this and that. And I also worked my ass off and I wasn't appreciated and she bounced. You can't, these women are, have just come to expect too much from men. Look, if, if you as a woman don't wanna work and you wanna stay home and you say, I'd like to be a housewife, and I'm fine with cleaning 100%, and I'm fine with cooking 100%, and I'm fine with making doing the laundry 100%. I'll take care of the house for you. But I, as a woman, then expect you to bring home and make sure that if I have a dentist appointment or, or the kids need to be uh, taken to do this, or I wanna go get some makeup so I look nice when we go out, I expect that as a woman from my man Congratulations, you'll find a lot of guys like that. Now, yes, it's very 1950s thinking, but it's very conservative and traditional. There are a lot of women that'd like to fill those roles and there are a lot of men that would like those women. But when a woman says, well, I work just as hard as you do, okay, do you bring in as much money as I do? Well, uh, uh, that's where all the arguments start. And if the guy says, you know what? Here's what I'm gonna do, I'll work less. Instead of working my 60 or 70 hours or whatever it is I work to bring in all this extra money, I'll work less and that way I can be home to help you out with this stuff. What do we hear? Well, yes, he does help with the, he does help with the dishes or yes, he helps with the cooking or he cleans up or he's, he's a good dad. But, you know, we used to bring in a lot more money and now I find that I don't get this and I don't get, you can't have it all. And men that see that women want it all have said, you know what, I got the game, I'm out. Let me move on to this next article here. It says, uh, online dating leaves middle-aged women in single wilderness. So this first article is, ladies, leave your men. Leave your men because he's, he's not worth it. Yeah, he brings in more money, but he's not pulling his weight. So these women are tapping out and then they're getting back into the singles market. Now, here's the important thing, okay? This article was from 2011, September, uh, or excuse me, 9th of July, 2011. So this is ex almost exactly 10 years ago. And I referenced this article for a reason. What have women learned in the last 10 years? Nothing. They've learned nothing. They're exactly the same spot and they're trying to will men into appreciating them and finding them attractive. It doesn't happen like this. So this, uh, this is, um, uh, I'll read through this quickly. Online dating leaves middle-aged women in single wilderness. Single women in their 40s and 50s are increasingly feeling that their love lives are over as men their own age use online dating to cherry pick younger models. But when did confidence and sexual maturity become so attractive? I'll tell you when. Always, always. Maturity? You mean being an adult? I've met a lot of 30 and 40 something women that are not very mature. And granted, there are a lot of men that are not very mature either. But the difference is the men, men have to have resources if they want to make it. 
You know, an 18 year old man versus an 18 year old woman, she's got the world in her grasp. The man has nothing. <laughs> he's got no money, he's got no prestige, he's got no power. Now, maybe he's a hot dude and he still gets lucky, but, but he holds no power. And as time goes on, women's power wane. Their youth, their beauty, their attractiveness, that wanes and that is their power. Men gain as they get older. We, if they age well and they take care of their bodies and they, they become more intelligent, they become more confident, they become more secure, they become more financially um, uh, successful, they have more money, they have more resources. Fair or not, women start out strong and at the end of the race, they're out of gas. Men start out not with very much gas and it takes them a while to get winding, but they end the race stronger. It's just the way the world works. But yeah, when did sexual maturity become so attractive? Always, always. They say uh, for this caption here, now this woman is my age, Susan Broom, 48, says she has given up on online dating because men her age wouldn't contact her. Now she's my age. Uh, she's, she's got some crow's feet around her eyes. Uh, I don't know what the rest of her looks like, but I can tell you this, um, she, while she's given up on, on online dating, my dating has been at, around my age. My dating has been everywhere from 22 on up like that. And they're not falling out of trees for me. You got to put in some legwork, uh, but you have to also have pretty good game. You have to have some resources. You have to be successful. And yeah, that means you may end up paying for some dates. It means you may end up uh, uh, footing the bill for things because men have gained that power. But what is she bringing to, what is the 23 year old bringing to the table? Her viva vivacity, her v v vivacious um, energy for life, her fun, her looks, her youth, her beauty, her humor, her intelligence, whatever it is. But men can make that choice. And what does she get to choose? She gets to choose a guy that is successful, that's maybe still attractive, that keeps himself in good shape. They're just mad because once they've made all these decisions and these choices, it's too late. They can't go back around and, and gain youth. But men over the years that start with nothing can gain intelligence, can gain power. You guys out there in your 20s and your 30s, even your 40s, a lot of guys that I've talked to said, hey, man, I, I got divorced. I was always low on money. Um, things weren't going great for me. But then I got, then I did get divorced and then I've started saving money. And then I realized I didn't need a fancy car. I bought a 12 year old car because I'm not a, trying to impress women and I don't have to have fancy furniture and a big decorated house. I live simply and I just stuff that money in the bank. And then one day, now they've got the power. They say when a, when a divorced woman on the wrong side of 45 with a brace of kids began to write about her experiences of being single last week, she opened her blog with the extraordinary, or extraordinary statement that she was in a relationship no man's land, condemned to be alone for the rest of her life. I am, she wrote, a plankton on the food chain of sexuality and the prospect of a relationship. The anonymous woman whose blog is called The Plankton is not alone in believing that there are problems specific to being a single woman in middle age. A survey this month found eight out of 10 women over 50 think they have become invisible to men. I am shocked, shocked. Well, not that shocked. Well, I'll tell you why you feel invisible to men, ladies. Because you are. As a 50-year-old woman, you know, I'm a, I'm a 49, 48, uh, I'm 49, 48 year old guy still. I got to think of when my birthday is and what year it is. <laughs> um, that's old age. That's my dementia creeping up on me. Um, as a 48 year old man, I can tell you right now, I'm not dating 48 year old women. Why? Because I don't need to. And, and to be honest with you, most of the women that are more flirty and more talkative and more interested in me are younger. That's just, that's just the way it works. So yes, when you get to be 45 or 50, a lot of guys your age are not. As a matter of fact, when you're a 30-year-old a, a woman, a lot of the guys that are paying attention to you are 40 or 45. When you're a 25-year-old woman, woman, a lot of the guys that are paying attention to you are 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, you know. They say, um, the anonymous women uh, read that part. Seven out of 10 women in the study felt overlooked by the fashion industry while three quarters of women in their 60s believe they had lost their identity by being labeled as mum. 
Women and men are living longer and fitter lives. The average age at which we divorce is rising. Now, again, remember, this is a decade ago. 41 years old now for women and 43 for men. And that number of single parents is projected to rise 1.9 million over the next decade. I bet you it's a lot higher than that now, the way society has decided to dispose of men. There's a new demographic of confident and experienced women at their sexual peak, as far as science is concerned, who would like to find a partner. Okay, let's break that down. 41 years old, women say, you know what? I can do better than this. He, he's not making enough money or he's got a pot belly or yeah, he's great with the kids, but I'm, I'm just not feeling the butterflies anymore. So I bounce. The average age woman divorcing is 41 as of this article writing. How many, I mean, how chased after are 40 year old women? They're not very much. And they say here, so this new demographic of confident women, men do not care if you're confident. In many cases that comes across as actually a little unattractive. Experienced, experienced women, experienced in work, doesn't matter to a guy. Experienced in life, okay, that might matter to a guy. Experienced in the bedroom, well, that could kind of be a warning sign depending on how experienced they are. At their sexual peak, well, again, guys that are really interested in just sexual kind of stuff, they're hooking up with 20 and 30 year olds because why would they go with somebody who's at their peak when they can get some, because guess what comes after a peak? The down, the backside of that, where if they get a young person, they get 20 more years of until they get to their peak. So they get all the fun all the way up and then it falls off. My autofocus on my camera, I think, doesn't like me waving my hands around. But anyway, a guy can date a 22 or 25 year old woman and get to enjoy her, her, her increase in value. Not when she's 45 or 50 and now is on the backside. Again, that's just how things work. They say, but life, friendship, and love for the single woman in her mid 40s and beyond has its own particular complications and sorrows. Uh, Susan Quilliam, a relationships expert and agony aunt, says that some women were suffering terribly. Uh, let me see if I have a... Uh, uh... Ding, ding, ding. What do we have for her, Johnny? My soundboard, I've put all the new icons on there and it takes me a couple seconds to find them. It'll speed up. Yeah, of course. Of course you, you're suffering terribly. Women, as they age, suffer more. Men, when they're young, suffer more in the dating world because, again, they have nothing. They say online dating sites, men have the pick up and down of the age range. They're also much more in a rush to get into a new relationship and are much less likely to give someone a second chance. It's because they got burned because women initiate the divorces. And a guy gets burned and gets his money taken or maybe has to uh, pay child support and doesn't have his kids. And he's like, man, this is not working for me. I'm not going to do this again. You're damn right they get burned. They say, which may seem callous, but they are much more likely to fall in love quickly. For men, it's a case of you fulfill the criteria, let's buy the double duvet. Women are more cautious. It's a shame men aim for the younger age range because women of 45 and 55 are arguably, arguably much more sexually mature and able to give a lot more pleasure than, say, a woman of 25. <laughs> oh, wait, you serious? No. Uh, I'm sorry, but a 55-year-old woman, yeah, she may know her way around the bedroom more than a, a, tw a woman that's 25, but given the choice, most men would really rather want the woman that's 25. And let's be honest, women today, I'd say women have gone so uh, aggressive in that kind of department, in the bedroom department, I'm guessing they probably know more than the woman that's 45 or 55 that had a husband of 10, 20, 30 years. These young women are putting us some notches on the belt and getting some experience, if you know what I'm saying. They say the author of Plankton Blog sums up the emotional aftermath of her divorce in bleak fashion. I may live till I am 90, but a sort of death has already come. I'm already in a wilderness, maybe facing my time again. Over 40 years, it's possible, but with no one. They go on a little bit further in here, and one of the women's like, oh, I, I'm, I'm miserable because I'm 42 and I want to date someone my age, but the only men that are interested in me are guys that are much older than me, like 50 and 60. Yeah, because guys can do that, women can't. And this is another quick read. This is a, a, a little blurb on an article, and uh, 
This is the regret. And the reason why, again, why this is so important, guys, is because a lot of guys get out of a relationship and they, I, they say that I didn't do anything wrong. I felt I did things right. And they feel bad like, hey, it's, it's probably something wrong with me. Now, maybe there were some things you could improve upon. If you had good communication skills and she had good communication skills, she would have told you what you did wrong and you could have, have corrected it or fixed it. Uh, but it, it, today it's easier to just throw somebody away and start over again. We are in the disposable society. Well, what the, the reason why I want to talk about this article specifically is because those of you guys that walk away going, man, I did it all right and, and I just don't get it. If you did everything right, Again, some small mistakes. We all make small mistakes. But if you think you did things right and you're walking away going, man, she's posting pictures on social media and she's moved on and she seems happy, just wait. Just wait. Because this is this and many, many articles are written by women that say, hey, you know what? I left a good guy. I'm going to party it up in my 30s. And then all of a sudden it's like I can't find anybody. And, and I've got another video I'm going to be doing over on Locals, a Locals exclusive. Let me throw this in here and, and just mention this real quick while I think of it. Um, it da, 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 if I have my, my uh, <laughs> if I can find all my icons, I have so many icons here that I've got to switch this around so I can find it. Um, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm pretty sure, there it is. Okay, I, I knew I had that somewhere. Sorry, guys. I'll, I'll get all my buttons squared away here shortly. Uh, join me over on betterbachelor.locals.com. Uh, I put up unique videos over there that I don't do here on YouTube. And uh, they're for subscribers only or, or supporters only. Or even if you're just a member over there for free, you get a, a, access to a lot of my content. Free speech forum. Um, I'm not quite at daily live streams yet, but I'm getting there. Um, you can live chat with other members. I've got original content. And also, let me say this, that um, uh, let me say this. I've actually, instead of starting a Discord server, I've started up a, a, a guardian, or did they call it gar, uh, uh, gilded? That's it. I just started a gilded server. So if you're a supporter, you can jump on into a game room with me and we talk politics. Uh, we will do some gaming. Like I'm, I'm actually getting into Valhalla or Valheim, sorry, getting into Valheim. So I'm going to uh, have uh, groups of people that want to go out in Valheim. We'll, we'll join up in, uh, um, in gilded and we'll, We'll live talk with me and we'll, we'll go play some games. I'm going to be straight streaming some of them over on Locals as well. So feel to, to free to join me over there. But I've got an article talking about uh, like, J uh, what's her name? Jana, uh, Jana Hawking. Jana Hawking, she says, can being single for too long stop you from finding a partner? Yeah, it can, Jana. As you age, it's going to get tougher on you. I'm telling you. Uh, so I've got a video I'm going to be doing on that one. Anyway, uh, this, they say I regret. Uh, divorcing my husband, what now? Uh, she says, I recently heard from a woman who's been divorced for about eight months. She told me that lately she'd been overcome with regret for divorcing her husband. She missed him horribly and she didn't enjoy being single at all that, mu at all that much. She had hoped the feeling would pass, but so far it has. In fact, the more time that has passed, the more regret she, uh, for divorce she felt. It's very clear to me that divorcing my husband was a mistake that I will probably regret for the rest of my life. The sad thing is my husband didn't want the divorce. I was the one who was pushing for it and who, who wouldn't accept anything less than splitting up. He tried to tell me it was a mistake, but I wouldn't listen. And now here I am eight months later realizing that he was absolutely right. So what do I do now? Is it too late to get him back? When we're already divorced, I know he's been trying to get out and see other people. And I think that he's decided he's ready to move on, but I don't think there's anyone serious. What do I, what do, I do now? Exactly right. This is what happens when you when you say, you know what, he's not meeting my demands. You, these women go single and then they realize, OK, last time I was single, I was 28. Now I'm 41 or 43. I, I don't get the attention. I don't get the men. Uh, I don't get, you know, everything that I thought was good is not. And they're finding this out too late. And even in 10 years, they haven't learned anything else. Uh, guys, for those of you watching me on locals, we're going. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do the exit for YouTube, and then uh, we're gonna we're gonna jump over and do the uh, do the dating profiles of the day. And I've got kind of a spicy. Um, I got a spicy Reddit post that I'm gonna read for you. So, guys, uh, thank you. Don't forget to join me over on betterbachelor.locals.com, and thank you all for your support. And if you're here on YouTube, we'll talk to you next time. <music>